All right, well, everybody, we are back for our next session here at Note Camp 2020. And uh, if you're listening to the music, it's kind of picked that way because I think a lot of people feel like, oh my God, my marketing is a mess. Oh, and I feel like a loser because I haven't done it on a regular basis. Oh, I, I, oh, we all have that kind of mental mind uh, screwing with ourselves for our business. But let's, let's face it, we're, the beautiful thing is, everybody, you can always start today. You can make today day one of your new marketing plan, of your new way to create a roadmap as we like. And I couldn't think of anybody better to talk about this aspect today. And so I'm honored if she'll come on live. Come on, Lindsay. It's all right to share your, oh, there she is. There she is. Howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Yes. So we are honored to have uh, my good friend, Lindsay Phillips, join us from the Smooth Sailing Business Growth Business Solutions. This lady is phenomenal. And I am been looking forward to this presentation. Caught a little bit of a sneak peek last night on your live stream as you were sharing yeah. to your, your audience out there. So I'm going to, let me do this. Let me stop my share. We're honored to have you, Lindsay. There we are. How's it going, Scott, baby? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Good. It's Friday and it's sunny and I love sharing tips on content marketing. Um, so yeah, it's my favorite thing. So it's good. Good stuff. Well, do you, uh, you, you, do you uh, want to jump straight into your PowerPoint slide you have, or you want to share a little bit how you kind of got into what you're doing, kind of your background? Is that part of your presentation too, or no? A little bit, yeah. I mean, honestly, I um, started off in the VA world. Uh, actually, I was working, this is even better, I'll go back a little notch. So I had two jobs, and they were part-time, making 11, and this is Canadian, so it's even worse, <laughs> making 11 bucks an hour. I mean, I had small kids, so I wanted to work part-time and stuff. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, I've had my business, I had a business years ago, um, but then the Canadian dollar went kaput. Um, and then I just wanted to get, you know, a better lifestyle, work online, have my own business again. And so I started as a VA part-time and then I was burning the candles at both ends. And then, um, I just went, screw it. I'm going in. <laughs> so I quit my jobs and started with the VA firm, made way more money. And as my, you know, it was still kind of part-time because my kids were really small. And, and then I went full-time and it just kind of grew organically. And then it was too much for me by myself. So I started to hire teams and then we grew and then I niched down to content marketing and then grew even more. And of course, um, how I got into the real estate part of it is that um, I just, for some reason, attracted real estate investors and helping them market their business. And I just saw that need that they just really struggled with marketing. I mean, they know there's, you know, you guys know you're investing inside out and I would never even know what to do. <laughs> and so I, not niche down, but kind of made a, an extra uh, side niche, if you will, of the business. And so, yeah, I'm dedicated to helping real estate investors market their business. Awesome. Well, we are so honored to have you. I should have had you on beforehand, but we have like, yeah, I was honored uh, to have you on our podcast recently. It comes out in a few weeks and just absolutely overjoy see what you're doing with the people out there. So what I'm going to do, if you want to pull up, you want to share yeah. your screen, pull up your PowerPoint presentation and I'll jump off here and I'll, you want to take questions throughout while you're going or you want to save them to the very end, Lindsay, what would you prefer? Yeah, I was actually going to say, I love participation. I love having a conversation instead of me talking at you. Um, and so I will periodically ask you guys questions. So you just put it in the chat. And then after kind of uh, some little segments, because there is so much information, I want to make sure that you guys are absorbing it and understanding it. So I'll pause and just say, you know, hey, do you guys understand this? Or, you know, I'll ask for your participation as well. And then obviously I can, you know, ask, you guys can uh, ask any other question at the end. I'm an open book, so ask away. Perfect. Awesome. Great. Great. So I will share my screen oh you just need to give me permission i need permission oh. to share <laughs> i thought i just fixed that hang on here let's see that's here. okay i know zoom changed their settings and interface and yeah they did i'm gonna try um just when you get second. used to something you're like oh man yeah but hang on here i just put in um it's all good. let me see here And you require that's good host host Let's 
say that that's strange. Yeah, while we're getting organized, maybe guys, uh, whoever's in right now, I would love to know um, how long you've been in note investing. So just put a, a, some things in the comment, the chat section there, how long you've been in notes, if you're new to notes. Um, I'd even love to know if you do other areas of real estate investing, if you kind of dabble um, in a number of different uh, investing strategies or modalities. Uh, I'm, I'm jumping off camera. I'm checking real fast. I don't. I'm not seeing where it says to. I'm not allowed. I've never had that happen before. It's kind of weird. Hang on. Yeah, so, you gotcha. No worries. So why don't we do this? What people? What's? Uh, well, I'm pulling this up. What is the one of your biggest fears when it comes to marketing, or or what's your biggest handicap? I guess you could say that's stopping you from doing taking action here real fast. And Jason's been in notes for three years. Judith is brand new. Awesome. Alex uh, is a private lender, been originating notes as a loan holder and looking to note investing. Marketing is time consuming, not gonna lie. <laughs> but I have some tips here on how to, how to automate and leverage some of those pieces so that you're not you know, a slave to your marketing. Um, diversify, five years, nice. I love how there are different parts of real estate investing and um, you don't have to just zero in on one and it just guys, gives you guys so many options. And awesome. So yeah, let me know what other um, struggles you have when it comes to marketing um, because I definitely want to help. I know I will answer a lot of things uh, throughout the show. And uh, then of course, there's questions at the end. Real estate broker, an investor, rental properties, flips. Tamara, you got it going on, girl. You got a lot, that is awesome. And so I work with stream, Streamline and Automate Marketing, absolutely. And really like content, and I can kind of talk about content marketing in general, um, cause some people kind of get stuck on what it involves. So it's honestly, content marketing is any way that you get your knowledge out from your head, out to other people and you're serving other people. Yeah, marketing, it does make you nervous and construction. Okay, as an estimator, awesome. Um, it can feel overwhelming, right? Like there are a lot of pieces. There's blogs, there's podcasts, there's videos, there's live. And the marketing world and the online space and social media, it changes all the time. So it can feel overwhelming. Try and share it now. They, they added some new link to there. So go try sharing it now, Lindsay. All righty. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. Uh, log in, log back out real fast. Oh, okay. Back, yeah. I'll be right back. And I'll back, pull baby. up some of these comments here real fast. Sorry, I will sorry. return people. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. All right. So Maria says one year, but his uh, lack of knowledge, not good with technology to get hard to use some social media sources when not tech savvy. Just got to spend some time with it, Maria. Uh, I get confused with page and concepts on LinkedIn or Facebook. Okay. I get that. understand that. Lindsay will talk about that some. Great, let's see here. Um, marketing makes me nervous. I'm in the construction industry as an estimator. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Alex says, big struggle trying to have a unified look across posts and platform, whether that's email or social media. This just kind of takes time. It takes some time to, to go through and, and, and build your uniformity and design across the same space. So let's see how it works now for you there, Lindsay. You betcha. All right, getting the... Uh... Let me just make sure I've got the right screen here. Is this still I'm disabled? Stay there. It's me then. It's all me. Hang on a second here. Let me do this then. I'll be right back everybody. No worries. Then you know what guys who those that are listening, I'll just kind of talk about myself and um, and kind of who I am and what I do. And then I'll just skip through those slides as we step in. So I am CEO and founder of Smooth Sailing Business Growth. We're a content marketing firm. And of course I have real estate investors marketing as well. I'm a speaker. I've had numerous podcasts and the one I have right now is the Real Estate Investors Marketing Show. So definitely check that out. And I'm also the host of a Real Estate Investors Marketing 
Facebook group. So you can actually go there at reimarketinggroup.com. All right, third time's a charm, Scott. <laughs> Yay! All right. There we go, all right. We're in business. That's why we do 15 minute breaks and so. <laughs> all good. I'm go with the flow. There you go. All right. So obviously we're talking about creating your content marketing roadmap to attract and convert. And so I just kind of told you guys uh, who I was and where I'm from. And so what we do with content marketing is whether it's podcasts, blogs, sales funnels, we help strategize and plan, create content. We publish it, we promote it, we analyze the data and we optimize. So kind of all those things rolled into one. And so what we're covering today, so I'm pretty excited about this, is how to map out your avatar. And some people are like, what the heck is avatar? It's not the blue guy that yeah. is in the movie. It's the who. It's who you want to target, who you, um, your ideal prospect, your ideal client, that perfect person. So we're going to help map out the avatar. Then we're going to talk about where to start. And that's where kind of some of you feel that sense of overwhelm. Um, cause you want to know what content to create and where to post it. Cause yes, there are a ton of options. So we'll cover that. We'll talk about how to multiply your content. So once you create a blog or a podcast, you can multiply it, recycle, leverage, and reuse. So I'm going to show you the nitty gritty of what we do for ourselves and for our clients. Then we're going to take it up a notch and show you a few extra tips to attract more people. And then I'm going to give you even more social media post ideas so that you will not be sitting there stuck wondering what the heck am I going to post? Because I know a lot of you probably <laughs> think that almost every day. And then we're going to create the roadmap for consistency and really pull all that stuff together so that you're not going day to day. You're not going week to week so you can plan it out and help automate it and scale it so it doesn't feel so time consuming, right? So why on earth do we have to do content marketing in the first place? So I would love your participation and I want to hear, um, type in there, you know, why you Getting will help you grow your business. I mean, I know, but I want to see what you guys think. Don't you find it that we just all have, one of the biggest things is people think overcomplicated a lot to be when they start off with Lindsay? Yeah, absolutely. Or they feel like they have to do everything right. um, where you don't. You can start small and go out. Um, so I'm not, I just want to make sure that the chat thing is working. So I have all panelists and attendees on. So, um, type in the chat. I'm probably just then, typing it in right now. Yeah. I just want to make sure that it's working. Okay. Yeah. Let's see here. I want to make sure I'm getting your questions. There we go. Perfect. Yep. Get your name out. And, um, and so people know what you want to do. Absolutely. Um, there's also, um, you want to make sure that you're getting traffic to your website, right? Hey, Bob, thanks for saying hi. You want to make sure that you're getting your people over to your website so that they understand who you are. They understand what your services are. They will understand how you can help them. And then, so I will just continue on to the next slide. There we go. So basically you're going to content marketing helps you attract traffic to your website. So obviously you're going to share your blog, your podcast, it's going to direct people to your website. And then from there, you're going to grow your e-list and to be able to nurture them. You're going to convert traffic to paying customers. So attract, convert, right? Two big words. Um, absolutely. Um, Javier, so reach your audience and make them aware of your activities. Perfect. You're going to build your brand and build your authority platform. You want people to know you are the go-to person for this. You are the best solution and you're using content marketing also, which I think this, um, is really left out of the puzzle quite often. And that content marketing helps you build stronger relationships. And especially with real estate investing, I mean, that's the name of the game, right? Is relationships and trust and credibility. That part is huge. 
and you're using it to increase your exposure so that you've got your little circle now, but you want more people. You want to extend your reach everywhere. So that's why content marketing is absolutely crucial. Now, we kind of touched upon some of the challenges uh, a little earlier. So I want to know what you find challenging about creating um, content marketing. So whether it's social media posts, blogs, podcasts, raise your hand and type in the chat bar. What are some of the challenges that you experience? And I'll give you a couple of seconds here. I know one person said earlier that um, it was uh, overwhelming, right? Um, that they felt like uh, content marketing was hard to do because there's so many options. So that was one of the challenges. So I don't know. Yep. Content Judith. So creating that content, even understanding like, what the heck do I talk about? <laughs> you know, what am I going to type every day? What kind of pictures am I going to make? So that's one of the struggles um, that people have when it comes to content marketing. Now, raise your hand and say, yep, if you um, are kind of fearful or worrisome about the tech. Because I mean, there's all those apps to learn, right? Active Campaign, Infusionsoft, Canva, God knows what else. Um, yeah, I mean, some people may feel like they're bothering people. No way. If you, you've got to think about it as you're serving people, you're helping them. Alex says developing compelling visuals to go with the written media. Absolutely. Um, that can be even just the tech of, and being creative and creating it. Um, it. It can feel like a challenge to create it all, Tamara. Absolutely. Now, Scott, two people raise their hands, but I'm not sure how to um, grab that. But for those that raise their hands, if you're able to type in the chat um, and ask your question there, that would be perfect. And then what I'll do is um, at the end of a couple of sections, I'll just open it up for questions in general. So I think that would really help. So I find from my experience that a lot of the challenges are consistency. You'll probably notice that some people post for um, you know, a week and they're all like crazy and active. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, two weeks go by and there's like nothing. So consistency is key. Creating that content. What the heck am I going to write? Which what you guys said, implementing it, the technology, understanding the strategies involved, that feeling of overwhelm. And honestly, just like, where the heck do I start? So we're going to help you with a couple of those, um, challenges today for sure. So let's start here, guys. Let's start. Who are you targeting? If you don't know who you're targeting, you're not going to know where to go, what to do, and, and what content to do, and how to attract them. You know, you're just going to, it's kind of like throwing spaghetti on the wall and hoping it sticks. So we really need to think about who you are targeting. And this is where I use that weird word, avatar. Um, and this is where you need to map out the avatar. So, and honestly, it is helpful to take a piece of paper, think about your best prospects, clients, JV partners, whatever that may be, team members. Think about your favorite ones, the ones that were easiest to work with, the ones that brought you the best ROI, and write down all the points, everything. Do a total brain dump. So think about their goals, their values, what's important to them. How old are they? Are they like a, a you know, a 50 year old male? Are they um, couples in their thirties with young kids? Is it someone that is in the corporate business and they, they want to do away with the corporate and they want to get into notes and have passive income instead? Is it someone that um, they want it as a side gig? Like, what are they thinking about? Do you know what I mean? What are their goals? Is it someone that wants to create a legacy for their family? Someone that wants to put their kids through university? Someone that wants to retire early, travel the world? And again, thinking about their lifestyle, their characteristics, what they're thinking, what their daily life is like, what their pain points are. If they're like, oh, if only I had this, I could do this. And really map out, get as granular as possible. 
and it will really help you think about what language you use, what you post, and all that good stuff. So you want to ask yourself these questions. You want to ask, where are your prospects? Now, I'm going to use the word prospects, but it can be, you know, clients, it can be JV partners, it can be um, team members, it can be anything, right? But I'm just using the word prospects. So where are your prospects hanging out? What medium do they prefer? How do they learn? And then what topics resonate, i.e. going into those pain points again and solutions for them? So we're going to go into these um, in a little bit more detail. So where are they? Are they on Instagram? Like, are they in Twitter? Are they on Facebook? Um, are they on Snapchat? I had a client once and, you know, everyone was doing Snapchat and he was like, oh, we got to get on Snapchat. We got to get a profile going, a post there. And I'm like, your peeps are, they don't even know what Snapchat is. Like, so why invest the time posting and setting up a profile and managing it if your ideal client is not even hanging out there? And there is ways you can survey your people. There are, um, you know, you can survey your, your clients, your list, your audience and find out like, hey, what social media platform are you on all the time? Or you can even just know from your own experience and being in the various platforms, or you can even do some R&D and look at the industry leaders or people that are you're mentoring after or want to you know, model and find out where are they active, where are they getting the most engagement, the most responses. So don't be afraid to do a, a little bit of spying, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, and so you really want to know where they are. I mean, with real estate investing, a lot of them honestly are LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram is really growing. Um, and you'll see Scott, you know, doing really well in Instagram and obviously crushing it on Facebook. Um, so you can kind of see, you know, where he's getting the most action. And I, I see a couple of questions, so I'll get to those after a couple of slides. Hey, Lindsay, on, yeah. the, on the survey we sent out to people, I just wanted to bring this up to interrupt you, but when I asked people what social media platforms do they use, LinkedIn was number one, Facebook was number two, YouTube was actually number three, yeah. and, and then Instagram was number four, and then Twitter and a few others came in fifth for the most part. But that's not really a surprise for that. But for those are yeah. curious of where to post, there you are, right? Perfect. Thank you for that. Yeah, feel free to jump in when you have a, a good insight there. That's perfect. And don't feel like you have to be everywhere all at once, right? Start with one or two, really build up those audiences, and then you can kind of add another one on. So kind of, I just don't want you to be in that, that frame of overwhelm. The next question that you want to ask them is how do they learn? Um, everybody learns differently, right? And especially with the age brackets. I mean, if you if your age bracket is 50 to 60, let's say, it may it obviously may not be for you, you guys, but I just want to get your your mind going in this frame. So if your audience is 50 to 60 or 60 or whatever, and they aren't really into podcasts, then don't invest the time in podcasts and, and guesting. Um, unless you're trying to get in speaking, there's other, um, strategies involved there too, but like, or, or they, um, are they readers? Do they love reading? For me, I love reading. I absorb information better when I'm reading. If, um, like for instance, again, another one of my clients, we did a survey and we found out that, um, the bulk of his audience was on YouTube. So we knew live Facebook, pre-filmed Facebook or, uh, videos, uh, webinars were key to attracting and really engaging and reaching that audience. So really think about the, that part of the avatar, right? And then what topics are going to attract that avatar? So if they are in the corporate field and they are wanting some passive income, then you're going to talk their language. You're going to talk from an emotional standpoint of you know having that job doing the nine to five you want to get ahead but you don't want to do more hours you don't want to like you know you still want to spend time with your family so how can they do that um you know get involved with notes investing right um and maybe they can joint venture with you so that they don't have to do all the work so 
you have to paint a picture and you have to speak to them about what's going on in their life, what their emotions are, what their problems are, and how you can solve it. So you're going to create topics and tips and content around that because that's going to attract them and that's going to convert them to say yes to you as the solution. So does anyone have any questions um, so far on kind of the avatar and figuring out kind of where, where they are and what to write? So I have a, you know, I'll throw something here. We found, we've done a lot of heavy work on our avatar. And Perfect. Uh, for those that are kind of trying to figure it out, what we have found is our primary people that watch, that uh, take action are 45 to 65. No offense, but it's older on here. 45 to 65 homeowners, college educated, um, making 75 grand to 250 or more per year. Mm -hmm. uh, um, obviously interested in real estate. It's actually like split almost right down the middle, 50, 50 men and women, which is, which is, I was kind of, kind of funny. Uh, but they're spending time on LinkedIn. They're spending time on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as we, we, we saw the survey already there for it. But they also interested in real estate, retirement, cash yes. flow, uh, landlord, tired landlords, uh, fix and flippers that can't find deals. Mm -hmm. um, they also, they buy stuff or subscribe to probably around two or three different magazines on real estate, entrepreneurship and housing and stuff like that. Perfect. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's great. And um, someone asked what kind of marketing services we have. I will actually touch upon that at the end. So stay tuned, Terry. So perfect. So yeah, if anyone has any other questions about the avatar, then I will move on. No hands raised. All good. So let's get creating guys. Let's create content. You can host a podcast. You can be a guest on a podcast. You can write blogs and articles. You can create pre-recorded videos. You can go live on Facebook, live on IG, live on YouTube. So there's different methods, right? That you can create content, like the foundational content that I'm going to show you how to multiply, leverage, reuse, and recycle. So, so I just want to kind of go over the overview of what those pieces are. So now we're gonna multiply your content. So recycle, leverage, and reuse. So it's so funny, people really think that they cannot recycle a topic. So let's say you are, um, I don't know, creating a topic about how to build a chocolate cake. Then you can actually write an article on that, all the steps involved, blah, blah, blah. You can create a video on that exact same topic. You can record a podcast on that same topic. You do not have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to topics. Um, so don't feel that if you do an article on a specific topic or like how to create more curb appeal if you're fixing and flipping or whatever the topic may be, people aren't gonna be, you know, if you put out a video next week on the same topic, they're not gonna be like, didn't you just do an article? They're not going to do that. I guarantee it. And know that everyone learns in different ways, right? Auditory, visual, and reading. So reuse and recycle that topic. And you can even do another video on, you know, just a slight different tangent on that same topic. So write down a ton of topics and go create some awesome content. Now let's create uh, let's have a piece of content and leverage it further. So let's say, and I have um, actually some real estate investing clients that do this. So he records a live video on Facebook and then we use, um, I'm going to show you some tools throughout this um, presentation. So repurpose.io is an awesome tool and it pushes live Facebook video right to YouTube. It can even strip the audio to create a podcast episode. And then we can also get transcripts and you can embed the video on your website and make like a blog post for it. You can also convert the video to the IGTV size. Um, so there are ways to leverage one piece of content. So this one client of mine, he does one live Facebook and then bing, bang, boom, we make a ton of content from that one video. So if you, for those that are overwhelmed or feeling like they need to like, be masters of creation, 
there are some wicked tools and wicked strategies that you can just leverage one piece of content multiple ways. The other element is reusing. So I call this creating snackable bites. So you're, let's say you have an article or a video or a podcast. You're, I mean, it's full of information, right? It's full of tips, quotes, statistics, whatever that may be, information that is serving your audience. So you're gonna take bite-sized pieces of that information and create separate standalone posts. So this allows you to take one piece and multiply it. And I'm gonna show you exactly step-by-step. Step. So here's an example. So I did a podcast um, with my buddy Aaron, how to get booked on podcast as a guest expert, right? And so this is just a screenshot from the, the podcast post on my site. And obviously it's got a summary and some tips. And one of those tips is, you know, creating a one sheet, how to prepare for the show you're pitching and so forth. So this is one piece of content that I created. So I took one of those tips and created a post. So this is the graphic I created in Canva and this is the post that I created. Um, obviously you can add more hashtags and do all that good stuff, but I don't wanna go uh, too into the weeds. And I just shared one of the tips, have a one sheet. This is crucial when you're pitching to a show host. And then I created, um, I used another tip and created a quote graphic. So this is a quote that I said during the podcast and you can fuzz the words and you know, it, it doesn't have to be exactly what was said in the podcast. I'm, you notice that it's branded, it's a shareable image. And then I just share that on social. And then I resize it using Canva click of a button, couple of adjustments, bing, bang, boom, literally takes 30 seconds. I can resize it for Instagram and Facebook stories. So that way it's like you're everywhere, right? Um, hey, Scott, Alex is saying that he, uh, they can't see my screen. They're just, just the talking. Is everyone else seeing the screen okay? Okay, so Tamara says yes. Sorry, Alex, I don't know what you're doing wrong. <laughs> Thanks, Bob, I'm glad I'm looking good. <laughs> and I hope you mean more than just my slides. <laughs> All righty, perfect, thank you guys. Um, and then another, um, so you've got, you know, you're pulling out those quotes. Don't forget about engagement questions. So, and I'm gonna read these examples because I think it'll get you in a different frame of mind. So for every piece of content that you can write, create, you can ask questions that relate to get feedback from other people. So I asked, you know, pitching to be on a podcast can be daunting. Have you, you know, what have you done to feel prepared and boost your confidence? What is your favorite podcast that you've been featured on? Share a link in the comments. Um, one sheets are a great tool to get booked on more podcasts when pitching podcast hosts. If you have a one sheet, share, you know, there's tons of great designs. And then, you know, heck, maybe someone will see it and want to book you on their show. So these are ways to get people to comment, to get people to share their opinion, to get people to share their own podcast, their own, you know, house that they're flipping or uh, success that they've done with a deal or a tool that they're using. You know, maybe they love paper source, whatever that may be. You want to get them to share comment engagement is absolutely key not only for facebook algorithms but also for um building those relationships and then looking at you as an expert so i just made these three up again took maybe 10 minutes from that one podcast and for those engagement posts don't feel that you have to make a fancy branded image you can just grab any old image that is like stock from like pixabay if you're in Canva, there's images, there's Unsplash. Um, so there are tons of different resources for images. And again, I just did this post, use that generic image, bing, bang, boom, super easy. You know, one of the easiest things that people with real estate investors out there is taking pictures of your properties you've bought. Oh, yeah. Flipped, or your rentals or properties you made an offer on. Maybe not, don't include the address if you don't control it or have done anything <laughs> with it. 
But that's one of the easiest things out there. Go take a screenshot or before and after photos, yeah. you know, the, that's always a great thing to, and, and easy to use as well too. People oh, love so easy. photos of deals. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely. Good tip. Let's take it up a notch, peeps. Are you ready? I love cats, just so you know. <laughs> You can use GIFs. So if you're doing engagement posts or any posts, Facebook always has a little GIF button, right? And you can just pull it right from there. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to download it. You don't have to upload it. Bing, bang, boom. And it makes it so much fun. Um, who doesn't love a good cat GIF? <laughs> and then the other thing to take it up a notch are emojis. My favorite site is emojicopy.com. Super easy. You can search like if you want fire, if you want raised hand, if you want happy, sad, um, a microphone, like whatever it may be. And then it shows up, you copy, paste, done. Now for some strange reason it showed up um, all in blue on this, but they are, there are a lot that are colored. And so it just kind of like when people are scrolling through a feed, emojis are going to capture attention. You can even use emojis for bullet points. Just don't go like bananas and have like 10 in there, right? Um, but it, it, it's a way to take it up a notch and, and grab someone's attention as they're going through the news feed. Now, infographics are huge. They are, I love them. Um, they are time consuming, not going to lie there. But you can just pick a few points from your blog or your podcast. Canva has amazing templates. All you have to do is change the color, plug in your tips, you're done. Just keep it simple. Make sure there's not a lot of text. Um, it's easy to read and they do stand out. Um, and you can even add these to your blog and podcast posts um, to beef up the post itself and add that extra content. Oh, I'm going to give you another tip. So if you do a blog and then um, you do a video on a related topic, you can embed that video in the um, blog itself to add extra content, visual will appeal, and then they see you face to face and it will um, even build that relationship further and develop that level of trust. Um, so adding images, even podcast posts, add more images, add more content, add more videos to kind of, you know, next level it up. So that way too, if you're creating these images, you can use them in different ways, right? Alrighty. So I said a lot there with multiplying your content, recycling it, reusing it, um, and how to take it up a notch. Are there any questions on the tools that I've mentioned? or the strategies involved, or some of the how-tos? While people are typing in their questions, you know, let's, let's talk about a couple things. Cause you talk about blog or podcast, and for somebody who hasn't started, that might seem a little daunting. What would be probably the easiest kind of blog, or vlog, as I like to say, that people could start with there, Lindsay, just kind of get the, get the creative juices going. What are maybe one or two things that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, so you have so much knowledge in regards to your area of real estate investing or notes investing. So again, I don't know the grant, like, okay, let's talk about due diligence. So you know about due diligence pieces of note investing. So you can write an article of what you know are your favorite um, strategies for due diligence and to mitigate risk. So you can write an article on that or do a video about it or even just one of the pieces. If you have sources of, of where to go get notes and, and you know some of your connections, um, you can share some of your wisdom, um, share some of the mistakes that you've done. Honestly, don't feel like you always have to be perfect and professional because what happens is when you're sharing some of the mistakes, people relate to you and then they're gonna see you know, how, how you um, overcame that. And now you really have it dialed in, you know what you're doing. So they're gonna trust you even that much more. Um, think about FAQs, think about those questions that you get all the time from people. Um, just, you have such a huge knowledge base in your head. You can write an article on any of those pieces. 
And if you're not a writer, you can talk it out on audio and it can convert to text. Or like Scott says, do a video, get transcripts, turn that into a post with just the video and the text. And there is a ton of copywriters out there or writing services that if you give them bullet points and information, they can write the article for you. The only thing I suggest with that is make sure that you add in your own stuff and your own voice. Now, a lot of my blogs on my site I have written, but there are probably a third of it I've had written for me, but I always add in my own voice, add an extra little tip. I'm like, oh, I really wouldn't word something that way and then change it up, um, add pictures and stuff like that. So there are tons of different topics. And honestly, as a little secret, if you Google like notes articles, you will see like from bigger pockets or other sources or industry leaders, you will see topics that they have created. And that will give you ideas. Don't plagiarize clearly, but you can um, write your own version of that topic. Um, same with um, like if you're doing keyword research or if you go to YouTube and, and you type in a, a topic that relates to notes investing or fix and flip or whatever you're doing, you can see a bunch of different topics that come up. Oh, another great place to go is um, Amazon. If you Google in Amazon in the book section, let's say about note investing, you will see all these different books, all these different topics. Um, you can even look in the reviews to what people say and their feedback, and that might get the juices flowing nice. in regards to topics to write as well. Mm. Um, I yeah. like that one. That's a good one, Lindsay. Sorry to be interrupted, but that's a great one. They're going to Amazon. Go to, you know, the, the trillion dollar guy, Jeff Bezos, to help us find another search engine out there to find some cool things, right? Absolutely. And by reading those reviews, it'll actually tap you into the avatar even further. So like, for instance, um, I always love using this analogy. So someone was selling face cream and then in the reviews, it said, oh, like my skin was really bumpy before. It made my skin feel really smooth. I felt uh, youthful. It felt more elastic. Then you're going to use those words in your marketing because that's exactly the words that your avatar is using. You know, no longer have bumpy skin, make sure it's smooth. Do you know what I mean? So you can really kind of play into the mind and the language that your, your avatar is using. So that is next level stuff, man. Now, one thing that you may not know this, we have a social media challenge every time we do this. We do daily award winners and then we do a big grand prize winner at the end. This whole event can be taking a, a, a nuggets from each speaker. You know, or a top nugget and turning in that, hey, the best yeah. of note people. What I learned at note, what what I learned Love at it. camp this yes. weekend, you know? Take a screenshot. <laughs> Share it. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great tip. Uh, Tamara asks, can you recommend copywriting services? I tried one or two in the past and they weren't great. Um, My buddy Aaron Hughes is a real estate investor copywriter, but uh, he is so maxed out. Um, I do, I have two, um, writers on my team. Um, so you're welcome to reach out to me. And then I know another girl, um, I can't think of her contact information right now, but she's in the real estate, uh, investing sphere and she invests and she's a really good writer. Um, so if you, um, yeah, I'll have my contact information at the end. So feel free to DM me. Um, or join my mark, uh, my Facebook group at reimarketinggroup.com and then you can ask those questions in my group. Cool. There you go. <laughs> Any other questions before I dive into the next section? Keep going. You're rock and roll, girl. All righty, baby. Now, so you've got the content, right? And you've multiplied it, leveraged, and reused it. But I mean, there's more to content than just that you also want to have other social media uh, posts to stay consistent and connect with your audience. So I'm going to go over some of the social media myths. Now I want you to say yes or no. If, if you agree with these, if you, if that's what you believe as well, I should only post content about my industry or I should hide the personal side of myself. Is And if you think that as well, just kind of put in the comments. Yep. Guilty. Yep. Myth. Perfect. And I'll give you a good story. 
Um, I was talking to an investor last week and he's actually a pilot and he like for his regular job. And then he does, um, people like personal Ray. Absolutely. Way to crush that myth. And so he, um, is, is a pilot and he does real estate investing. And so he really felt like he had to like have it completely separate and he didn't want to talk about him as a pilot. And I'm like, Oh man, I'm like, no, leverage it and use it. Do a video of like, while you're in, you know, you've got your pilot outfit on. I'm like, you just cooled it up a notch. <laughs> and also pilots like you, or that have, you know, high end jobs like that, that's your avatar, right? You want to play into that and connect with people on that level. So, you know, mention in your post, like, yeah, just landed in Madrid. Um, you know, I've been talking to um, my property manager and we closed the deal. We did this, whatever it may be, just kind of like slide that in and, and do pictures of your everyday life. Um, you know, have a picture of you in the pool in the backyard. If you took the Friday off that shows lifestyle, um, you know, woo, kicking it back on a Friday with a drink. You know, it shows that you've got passive income. It shows that you're what your lifestyle is like because you are in the world of real estate investing and they see that result through you. So definitely um, embrace the personal side of yourself and it, it cannot always be about industry. Let's go to a couple more. No one wants to hear my journey or my story. And if I don't post about my services constantly, I won't get any business. So raise your hand if you thought that, um, or if you're like, I know that's not true, <laughs> then type in the comment section. I want to hear uh, what you guys think. And, um, and so even just talking about um, that pilot, people want to know his journey. People want to know your story. Um, they want to know how you got into real estate investing, what your background is, because honestly, they're probably exactly like you and they're going to connect with people that they know, like, and trust and that they can relate to. And, and I'll never forget this. I remember I was uh, years ago, I was work, uh, doing some work for a service business industry and all his posts were all like, if you have a problem with your pipes, call us, blah, blah, blah. And that's all it was. And I'm like, honestly, if I was looking for a plumber or whatever, and I went to their Facebook page and that's all I saw, my thought is um, they're in it for themselves. They don't care about me. All they care about is the sale. So you really have to have that nice balance. Posting won't bring me any ROI. It's not effective. And I should only share my own material. So let me know if those thoughts go through your head. And like for me, I share other people's material. If I find an article that is, or a video that I found interesting, absolutely cat, that's a myth. Um, if I find something that's relevant and helpful to me, then I know it's going to serve my audience. So whether it's bigger pockets, whether it's Scott's videos, whether it's um, anything, it can be anything. It's okay to share other people's stuff. It shows that you care. It shows that you're up to date on what's going on, especially now with, um, with COVID and like what's happening in the space right now. And like, I know things are going to change within the next six to 12 months and things are going to become, um, you know, more opportunities in the note world. Right. So, and there's tons of articles that are addressing that and what's happening in, in distressed properties. So share that information, share the news. It shows that you're serving and that you know what's going on now. And this is the other big one that people think, you know, Oh, I didn't get business from that social media post. It's bigger than that. And we talked about that at the beginning. It's showing yourself as an expert. It is branding. It's uh, building an authority platform. It's pushing traffic to your site, building relationships, nurturing people. It's all rolled into one. One social media post is not going to bring you a deal, so to speak. Um, it, it's, it's a full, bigger, all-encompassing strategy. How am I on time? 15 minutes already. Now, we talked about a few, so I'm going to give you some bonus social media post ideas. And Scott gave a great one on sharing pictures of, you know, what's going on in your daily life, properties that you're, you're working on. Um, so yeah, talk about a deal that you, you closed or showcase your accomplishments. Or if someone gives you, um, you know, some feedback like, oh, you really helped me out today. 
um, share that, share what's going on in your daily life. And I mentioned like industry news from different sources, um, FAQs, there's FAQs that you get constantly. People ask me the same questions about social media content and content marketing. And I cover those constantly um, on social, in videos, in my Facebook group and so forth. And I've mentioned this before too, ups and downs that you've had, it's okay to share those. It's okay to share your journey. I mean, um, my posts like years ago, the SEO on those are crap. They suck <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie. My first few videos I did, they were horrendous. They are an embarrassment, but <laughs> You have to start somewhere and you don't know what you don't know until you dive in and you, you don't expect to be perfect right away. People want to relate to you on a human level. People want to know that you're not perfect. And honestly, when I'm on social and I see posts of like, you know, the perfect entrepreneur all posed modeling and their life is perfect and you know, they're crushing everything. I'm kind of like, ah, it's too good to be true and it honestly kind of turns me off i want someone that i can relate with and enjoy their company and like hey read any good books lately share books that you've read share articles that you've read and you know just ask a ton of questions for people um if someone's done something nice lately thank them out loud on social media and who doesn't love throwback thursdays and who doesn't love cats and minions? <laughs> I share them all the time. You gotta yeah. show your personality. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, Absolutely. one of the things you talk about, you, you sit by sharing articles. There's a couple articles that I get a lot of DS News, Default Servicing, DSNews.com, HousingWire.com, you know, uh, uh, Google Housing or Google Real Estate or Yahoo Real Estate Trends. Those are always have really great articles. US Today often has some great housing stuff that's going on too. So those are great things to share that can help prime the pump for you. Yeah, absolutely. And it'll even sometimes just spur ideas for, for more content, or you can just pull out little tips from different articles, not just your own. Um, so if you don't have any blogs yet, you can still take out little snippets, stats, whatever from that. Um, Tamara says she sets up Google alerts for relevant topics. Brilliant. Learns, I, I don't even do that. <laughs> Look at you go. That is awesome. Um, and here's a kind of a point to illustrate something too. So I know a real estate investor and she, um, she does, I think I have the story, right? But I won't mention her name, so it doesn't really matter. So she does, uh, she's into motorcycles. Cool, right? And she leads different trips and groups and stuff like that. And so some people may think, let's just leave that to the side. Let, I don't need to share that. But in actuality, it's showing that you've got an active life. It shows that you're pretty darn cool, but it also shows you as a leader in a different space. So it shows that different part of you, right? So again, not being afraid to show your personal stuff because you can spin anything. Like, um, you know, I go camping in my trailer. I can spin it like entrepreneur lifestyle. I get to take a week off. My team's handling everything, um, enjoying life. So, you know, if you did want to kind of put that spin on it, um, success tips, I am sure you learn something every day, including me, like the Google alerts. So I can even, you know, later say, oh my God, Tamara shared this awesome tip on setting up Google alerts for relevant topics. So now I'm going to search up how to do it because <laughs> I don't know how, um, and find that information and I'll share it with my people because if I want to learn it, so does other people, right? So you just kind of have to get in the mindset of everyday things that you're doing, things that you take for granted, things that you know, things that are going on in your life, share it. Oh, and don't be afraid to use old content. If you've got blogs from a year ago, 10 bucks says there's really good info in there and it's evergreen, recycle the heck out of that. It's still good content. All right. Are there any questions about social media posts um, before I kind of wrap all this up and put it together and create your, your roadmap? Looks like we're looking good so far. Alrighty, perfect. So now we're gonna map it all for consistency. And I have two different ways. One I do for me and one I do for my clients. So option one is you can map it out by the week, right? So you know you've got a new blog or podcast, whatever it may be. 
you want to do quotes, you want to do tips, you want to share things that are funny, maybe uh, motivation, those snackable bites, right? Those, uh, that, that we worked on earlier. And then you can map out, okay, Monday, I'm going to do a blog, a quote, and a tip. Tuesday, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to share an outside post. I'm going to do something funny. I'm going to share another one of my blogs. Wednesday, I'm going to take a snackable bite of one of those blogs and I'm going to do an inspiration post. And you can Google like real estate investing quotes, business quotes, mindset quotes. The world is your oyster in Google. Yay, Linda. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. And Fridays, you can do a tip and then something funny. So it's almost like a blueprint, right? And then the next step would be, now that you know what your formula is, you can actually create a draft. So like week one, Monday, I'm going to share this blog. Twitter, obviously, you know, it's got 180 characters, uh, two eight, oh my God, 280 characters. Um, so it's a little bit different. So we do a different post for Twitter. And then obviously Instagram is different as well. But then you write out your, your blurb and then you put the picture in. So you can create a whole draft. Now we do these for clients and then they approve it and then we schedule it. So that is one way. This way is a little bit more time consuming, but it's an option. Now here's what I do. So I know that um, I have blog uh, blogs, podcasts, um, and videos. So I have a template, my, my team just takes it, creates a bunch of posts, got the graphics and they schedule it. So I know that is consistently going out all the time. And then like for snackable bites, I think, okay, I need 12 in a month. So I might do two, two a week, randomly schedule them out. I know that I want to create six quotes. Again, I just go to my blog, go to my podcast, go to my video page and pull out little snackable tips. Funny. I actually steal stuff from Facebook while I'm sitting on the couch on my phone, on my personal Facebook. I'm scrolling through. I'm like, oh my God, that's freaking hilarious. Especially dad jokes. They're the best puns ever. And then I save them. And then I put them in my Google Drive. So then my team just takes all those funnies that I stockpile and they write a post and post it. So I don't even have to think about it. And then uh, sharing other people's content. So um, I you know, stockpile or I'll just go to some different um, resources like Scott said and share those. So I kind of just think in my head, okay, I need 12 tips. I need six quotes. I need six funnies. And that to me is a lot easier because then I'll just, you know, the first of every week, I'll find six funnies or my team does it for me, obviously. They'll take six funnies and then just go right into the social media scheduler and schedule them out. The quotes and the snackable bites I do create. I do secretly love Canva, even though I shouldn't be in the weeds. I do love creating them. <laughs> so I want to do something I enjoy. And if you don't enjoy it, get someone else to do it. Um, so that's kind of like how you map it out. Now Canva is the bee's knees. If you don't have Canva, you have to have it. There is a free version. The paid version is super cheap. Um, tons of great features. So I go into Canva. I do like, you know, 12 or however many engagement posts. I do 12 tips. So then I just, I actually just did this the other day for all of June and it took me, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And then right in this little, um, little note thing right there, that's where I type what I want the post to be. And I add emojis in there. You can just copy and paste them in. I put in the hashtags, but honestly, my team deals with the hashtags so that I don't have to do that part. I just do the part that I like. <laughs> um, that's the beauty of being the boss, I guess. So, and then you just, you do them. And then maybe you put in your calendar the next week to pre-schedule them. So then you just go to your Canva, download it, copy, paste, put it in your scheduler, bing, bang, boom, done. And then of course with um, Canva, if I'm making these all in square and I need some that are like a Twitter size or something, I hit the resize button, make an adjustment, download it. This, um, the text stays there. And then, but my team actually adjusts it for Twitter anyways, and I don't have to deal with that. So um, I, uh, this way, I don't have to deal with the pieces that I don't want to do. Um, and of course, for my clients, we just do it all. They approve the main content and, and we just post it all for them. So they don't have to worry about it. So Canva is huge. Um, 
did I do, uh, I can't remember if I did a live Facebook in the REIM yesterday. I can't remember one day from another. Anyways, if I haven't already done a live video on how to do this, um, I will. I'm in Canva every stinking day and I absolutely oh, yeah. love the ability to hit the resize button and pick exactly which you want it to fit for, whether it's a YouTube thumbnail, a Twitter post, an Instagram post. It's so easy to do. And you might have to make a little adjustment here or there, but it, it's, it's, it's pretty freaking stinking awesome. It is, absolutely. And, and then you got like a file for your logo. So all you have to do is go, bing, just drag your logo over to brand it. So I don't like over branding because then it looks, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Contrived. You know what I mean? I like having some posts where there's like, it's just the image by itself. Like as if I just grabbed it from Google. Sometimes I like to have it like here with the color and it's branded. Sometimes I do use the logo, especially if it's like a shareable tip or a quote from me type of thing. Um, so don't feel that you need to like brand the hell out of everything. You don't. You do want to take branding into consideration so that you're consistent. Um, but yeah, you don't have to go crazy. Any questions on the roadmap and kind of, you know, creating that consistency? So basically you're going to create your own routine, right? You're going to create a blog, video, or podcast. Um, you're going to leverage, reuse, and recycle and multiply them into little pieces. You're going to fill out your template and create the draft or use Canva like I showed, and then you're going to pre-schedule them. So what we do is the first week of every month, we, it's content building, content creation for the following month. You always want to work ahead, man. And then, you know, the team recycles and reuses it. And then we, you know, proof the team, proof me. And then in that third week of the month, it's pre-scheduled for the month after you get a week off and then it's the month all over again. So this is how you build that routine. It doesn't have to be onerous. And obviously there's pieces you can outsource and then you're consistent. And then some of this is like, you know, the bones, right? Like your tips, your snackable bites, your blog, your videos, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, on your day to day, you're going to have those spontaneous posts where it's like taking a picture of yourself or this is what I did today or asking a question or something that you learned right then and there. You have to have those spontaneous posts. Um, so as long as you um, like calendar, like, hey, I need to be in Facebook 10 minutes a day or 15 minutes every two days, put it in your calendar or it's never going to get done. Any other questions on the map and kind of creating that routine? One of the things that I did a few years ago is I, I did the whole mapping thing, but instead I ran, I did a 30 by 30, as I called it. There's 30 different things I could do on a monthly basis. And there's obviously 30 days on average. And I would go through like you did. And I would just, okay, I'm going to do this on Monday, check these off on the boxes that I do during the week. And it made the posting so easier. Uh, I, I just getting into the schedule, getting that habit. I mean, that 80% yeah. of sales, as we all know, happens after the fifth contact. Yeah. You know, and so many people will post once or they'll share something else, but they don't really comment on it. They don't give their insight on it. If you're sharing a post, that's great, but take the time to, hey, here's what I thought about this. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Leave an open-ended question to ask stuff, but get in the habit of sharing on a regular basis because people will see something once and they'll forget about you in 10 minutes. And that's why you've got to hit them on multiple platforms multiple times. Right, Lindsay? Absolutely. And here's another bonus tip. Don't be afraid to to share what you do on social. So if you go live on Facebook, share it on other platforms. If you're, um, if you did some exclusive content on Facebook or did a live on Facebook, share it in an email to your list and link to that. And always, cause you can even share like a cool quote and then just write a quick email to expand on it. And then pushing people again to Facebook, hey, make sure we're connected on Facebook so you can get more fun quotes or whatever it may be. So just kind of reusing it in different ways and different avenues and sending it out in all those platforms. And don't forget email because email is very important as well. That's a whole nother topic. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Now, I'm sorry to say, but the work doesn't stop there. <laughs> There's more. Um, once you can't just post and forget it, right? 
you have to engage, you have to respond, you have to communicate. If people are liking or commenting, um, you know, answer back, like what they said, um, even DM them and say, oh, I'm glad you, you know, you really liked that. Do you want more information on X, Y, Z? I'm happy to send you something. And the more conversations you take off, like in the DMs or direct messages, you can convert that to a phone call and make that uh, relationship even stronger. And you have more potential to convert them um, through that way. And then the people that are following you, go on their pages, comment on their posts, um, like their posts. I know it's time consuming, but you can't expect it to be a one-way relationship. It has to be back and forth and having that ongoing conversation. And it's like, it's, they feel like you know what's going on in their lives and that you're a part of their lives. And that's how you're gonna you know, bring them through that sales funnel and build that stronger relationship. Um, super crucial. If you carve out, let's say half hour on a Monday, a Wednesday and a Friday, and like, don't think of it as a nice to do, think of it in, in, from a sales perspective um, and customer support uh, perspective, it's a have to do. Like, mm. honestly, it is absolutely crucial. Yeah, um, that's, the, that's the beautiful thing. I think so many people with what we do, people are like, wow, you actually responded. It's not a chat bot or something automatically. Like, no, no, I don't mind communicating with you on, yeah. on Instagram. And if you think about Gary Vaynerchuk, let's go back to Gary V. The, the, the man, we all, us guys all have man crushes on. Even some women have some man crushes on. Uh, man crush Monday. Yeah. Uh, he started off with Twitter by just responding to people on Twitter on a one-off basis. Still does it to this day. I've had a few yeah. conversations back and forth. Just other real estate investors, things you can follow. Hey, love to connect with you. You know, what are you doing? What's your focus? That's just an easy aspect of things. And it's all the touch of your fingertips. You just got to share and, and use it. to start taking those actions, right, Lindsay? Absolutely. And you got to think of it as like you're having conversations. Because we are in an online world and you're not necessarily always face-to-face -face with people, especially during COVID, um, but you, it, it's, you're having those conversations and you're building those relationships. So if you have the word conversation in your head um, while you're in social media, it will make a difference on how you communicate with people. Um, and I know like, you know, I follow some pretty high end people and uh, I'm not going to name names clearly, but I find like they get a ton of comments, but he never comments back. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> like, I just think that's rude. <laughs> and that kind of like, mm, it kind of turns me off. Right. Um, if some people feel like, oh, but if I need to have this um, appearance that only my team will communicate and I'm, you know, untouchable or you have to pay, you know, a thousand dollars to even have a conversation with me. Um, I don't know. I, that doesn't jive well with me personally. I mean, yeah, my team member helps me out with communications and quotes and stuff like that. But, but no, I, people are always fine. You answer. I'm like, yeah, I, I want to know you. <laughs> I want to have a relationship, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All righty. And so um, here is my gift to you to get you started. So I actually have two weeks worth of done for you content in the real estate investing uh, specifically. So blogs, there's a video script. So you can just take that script. I've got spots on where you need to edit it and then um, grab your phone and start talking. And then uh, nurture emails, um, there are social media posts, there are snackable bites, there are images. I even have a video of how to brand your images. And I even have 30 days of social media post ideas in there in case the two weeks worth of free content wasn't enough. <laughs> so that is my gift to you. So just go to smoothbusinessgrowth.com slash no camp. And Scott, thank you. He put the, the link up in there as well. So go ahead and just swipe and deploy. Super easy. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. That's that's, well, that's really leg up, right? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one then, of the things that we did here's the thing too, for those that are interested. I mean, we as a special bonus, one of the things I offered up uh, for our, our paid attendees is uh, doing a mini episode of them, being on my podcast and me interviewing about their note business or their real estate nice. business. Nice. 
and, and sharing that as a, a way for them to start sharing that out there and getting the message out, not only to our network of millions of listeners each month, but also something kind of getting them, them um, comfortable with that aspect of things. So it's an extra bonus for our paid attendees. Most people don't know about. Yeah, that's perfect. I love that. And this is like, people are like, but you're giving all this stuff away. But I'm like, but I'm serving, I'm helping. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it, you can't hold all that stuff back. Well, you've used it before. I mean, it's, 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 it's an exponential way. I mean, yeah. yeah, you can hoard everything. And that's the thing about some speakers. I get, so they're like, oh, I, I won't share my slides. I'm like, why not? Well, that's my intellectual property. Somebody could steal it. Okay, whoopee yeah. freaking duda. All they gotta do is do a screen share and go do it. Share yeah, it and it's done and they'll probably end up, uh, you know, linking it back to you or thinking the presentation. You know, it's not, these days, it's not, you know, there's a lot of public knowledge out there when most people don't think it is anymore, right? I know, and that's true. And, and honestly, if you think of marketing your business as you're educating your audience to attract and convert, if you have that frame of mind, then it's, it's, it becomes a lot easier. Yeah. One of the and biggest things right, right now, is with, we, we had Shante Duffy on earlier talking about forbearance agreements and people being laid off. This is the opportunity between now and the end of the year and, and going forward for you, like what you just said, Lindsay, educating people around you, people that have lost their jobs or people that have been furloughed or taken early retirement, people that have money to invest. Yeah. All right. Uh, sharing on the social media so that people that have deals, whether they're a fund, like a couple of our speakers, or they're an investor like you and me. Oh, you're looking for deals? I happen to have an asset in, in the areas that you're looking for. Let's, let's talk some more. So building that network, getting those conversations started, priming that pump, yeah. um, such an opportunity. I don't want to think when they say oh, about education, oh, I got to teach a class. No, 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 no. You're just helping them get comfortable with the idea and sharing what you do. Because if you owned a pizza joint, if you had the best pizza in the world, nobody's going to show up if you're not out there sharing it. Yeah. You know? That's so. true. And I, I, I don't know. I love teaching and I love, um, I don't know. It's fun for me. Some people feel scared by it, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun part of my job. Right. Um, yeah. So obviously, you know, go get the, um, the free swipe and deploy content. And if that's not enough, you're like, okay, but I just don't want to do it at all then we actually have a done for you um, marketing program uh, with the real estate investors marketing team where you can get that every month. And it's just swipe and deploy every month, the membership site, or you can up level and have it on autopilot where we actually do it all for you and schedule it for you and brand it. Um, there we go. So the done for you content vault, you get six blogs a month that have SEO keywords, two images for each blog, three weekly social media posts to share each blog. And of course, you're going to link it back to your website. There's three extra shareable tips that relate to the blog. So those snackable bites. We include images, so you no know more online searching. They're right there, just download them. Obviously there's emails, the swipe and deploy emails to broadcast to your list to share the blog. Um, and I've, plus I've given you other ideas on how you can leverage that stuff too, right? And then six video scripts so that you can also create videos on these blogs. And so that is all in the membership site. So you can kind of see a quick snapshot of uh, one month and kind of like what it looks like. So right now it is $5.97 um, for, you know, every month to get all this content done for you so you can focus on your investing and do what you love. If you go to smoothbusinessgrowth.com slash done for you, you can check out the content vault. And then um, if you want to put it on autopilot and you don't even want to think about it or touch it, and you just want to spend time in your investing, then we are all there for you. So head to that site. And oh, yeah. Can you bring it back up? Can you bring yeah, it back to the last sure. slide so I can put the, type it in there? Yeah. That's freaking phenomenal. And they're all real estate investing. And so I have like, obviously there's only four weeks in a month. Um, so I have six in case one doesn't resonate with your avatar and then whatever you don't use one month, you can use it the other month. Um, so it is all done for you. Wow. <laughs> are you, you are you, uh, are you, are, are you paying in pesos? <laughs> Cause that's phenomenal pricing point five ninety seven. Yeah. Wow. It's because I'm able to do like, it's a membership site, right? Where you're able to take it and, and run with it. 
Um, so yeah, and I would rather make it easy for you. I want you to be able to market consistently and focus on what you want and not be stuck. Um, so try the two weeks for free. And then, um, yeah, if you're like, yep, I can use this. It works for my avatar, you know, then, um, then yeah, then sign up for the, the monthly membership. Now, is there a limited amount to they cancel at any time? What's kind of the, the I don't know those questions. Are no, it's just month questions. to month. Month to month. Wow. Yeah. Super easy. Wow. And then there's ways you'll see on the site there. You can customize it if you want a custom quote to add some things on that are more custom. Um, we do that too, but, but yeah, so that way for, for any level of where you're at in your business or your marketing goals, um, but at least this way you've got consistent marketing. You look like you know what you're talking about. You're building your authority. Um, you're going to, you know, attract more people and, um, and just build those relationships and that level of trust. So it's really key. Mm, mm, mm. That's good stuff. What questions do you have for Lindsay here? Uh, we got about uh, about 10 minutes left there since we got a little bit of a later start with everything there for you. I mean, no worries. Um, so what questions, well timing. What, what do you see that's really just rocking right now? There's a one thing, one thing that they could do. What's really kicking ass and, and taking names right now in marketing? I would say, and especially in the real estate investing sphere, are videos because like people are investing, it's money, right? And when it comes to money, people close up and they feel um, a little bit like worried or apprehensive or they don't want to be scammed, all that good stuff. So doing video allows people to see your face, your personality, and it's like instant trust. And so the more video you do, the faster you're going to catapult that level of the relationship and making sure that you're asking questions and getting involved and interacting with people. And then how I said earlier, um, with one of my clients, he does the video, use that repurpose.io app um, to, you know, strip the audio and put it in YouTube and make an IGTV um, video and all these different avenues. It just, it helps automate the whole system and then you're able to take the snackable bites, make quotes and all those extra pieces, make a blog post, um, extend on it. Um, you can multiply it in, in many ways. And it's like video, it, it's free, right? <laughs> you just need to know what's in your head and grab a phone or your video camera or whatever and away you go. It's low barrier. Whereas like podcasting, if you're hosting a podcast, there are more costs involved. There's launch, there's setup. Same with articles. Some people love writing. So it's like super easy. It, it comes naturally to me. I love it. Um, some people not so much. So if you do need a copywriter, there is that extra expense. So if you're still new, video, 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 go live in Instagram, go live in Facebook and share it, multiply it, leverage it, reuse it, recycle. And then, yeah, you can't go wrong. Now, someone asked uh, Hootsuite. <clears throat> Thank you for bringing that up, Ryan. Um, so yeah, so we use social media schedulers um, like Hootsuite, um, Buffer, there's Meet Edgar, uh, Agora Pulse. There's a lot of options. You do, if you are using Instagram, you do want to use one that makes it easier to post to Instagram because some don't post to Instagram direct. You have to like do a push notification on your phone, which is painful. Um, and, uh, but do know that Facebook rules because they've changed a lot. You cannot pre-schedule content from Hootsuite and all those others. You cannot pre-schedule content from that to your Facebook profile, but you can to your page and then you can share natively in the app from your page to your profile. If that makes sense. Yeah, that stinks. <laughs> I uh, know. So irritating. I think the schedule um, should, should, should have cut their rates because of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Paul Alvarado asked a question. Is there a preferred frequency for best practices regarding email campaigns for nurturing? The more, the better. Push that threshold. You will know if you look at your stats on your open rates, your click rates, and your um, opt-outs, you will know when people are pushing back. If, if your opens aren't as much, or if your opt-outs uh, increase, then you know you need to ease off a little bit. But like, I get so many emails from so many people 
and I don't unsubscribe. I don't open them all but they're in my face all the time, even if I don't read them. So you're, you're, you're top of mind constantly. And then something will appeal to me and I'll open it and read it. Sometimes I click and buy or do whatever. Um, but, and, but just make sure that when you are emailing, it's you're serving or even just ask a question. Like it doesn't have to be a whole big long production. Share a link to something in a little like two second blurb. You just wanna make sure that you're serving them um, you know, start off with once a week, then move to three times a week. As long as you're consistent, you can't do something for two weeks and then go dark for two months later and then expect your e-list to be like, oh, yay, they're back. And then open everything up because they're not. They're going to be like, oh, I forgot about you. So here's a disturbing, here's a disturbing, disturbing statistic. Um, the, those people that have answered the survey so far, 28% uh, send out an email once a month. Ooh. Yeah, but get, get, oh, it gets worse. The other 72% of people answered have said never. Ouch. Slap your hands, people. <laughs> oh, man. No, you communicate, right? You need to communicate. You need to be top of mind and you need to educate. Crucial. And crucial once a week crucial. is critical. Sunday night oh, is man. often the, 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 the Sunday night's often the best open rate because people are sitting there looking at their emails, getting ready to go back to work. Um, we've always found when we send an email Sunday night, like the day before we do our Not yeah. in America, it's always a great open rate. And if you're building content, whether it's a video, a podcast, a blog, whatever, you have stuff to share. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be like an e-zine where it's all these pictures and it's all formulated and it's all pretty. Um, you can even share, an, again, an article of somebody else's. Hey man, found this article. It was so eye-opening. The statistics about this is this you know, are huge. And then in the PS, you can have a call to action. Hey, if you want to learn more, if you want to connect with me about how I can get more passive income for you or whatever, um, hit reply. Easy. Paul asked the question, is it the same frequency to asset managers as it is to your consumers, your warm database? And, and no, you should, I, I'm a big believer, you should still be sending out at least once a month, if not once every two weeks to asset managers. I would, don't send an email on Monday or Friday. Uh, cause they're gonna get bogged down, mm -hmm. but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, always much better open rates to asset managers. And I would do it every two weeks. So you're not even bored, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. A lot of times I've bought or had lists sent to me six months, a year after we started emailing them. And they finally said, Hey, something came across my desk and I found your email. Cause I called it the green email because your branding, the colors you use. And I see you smiling there, Lindsay. It's all a little bit about kind of being consistent in what you're providing. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And you raised a really good point there, and that is segmenting your list. So you may have multiple avatars, right? Like you said, the asset managers versus other people that want to, you know, do deals with or and whatever else. Um, but you might have separate lists because you might want to send different people different content based on who they are. Yeah, exactly. Smile, Lindsay. I'm taking a quick photo for social here real fast. <laughs> There we go. Perfect. So uh, segmenting, there's a lot of different tools to do. I love the fact the two weeks of, of content there, people can get a, start getting a feel for what's working, for starting that consistency, because it all starts, a lot of people feel like it's that ball or rolling up the hill when it actually, it isn't. It's more of a little mound, not a hill or a mountain when it far, as far as starting to get the ball rolling and sharing things that you don't have to be everywhere like you talked about. Be the places that you want to be and where your, and your listeners out. and your audience are and, and expand on that, right? Yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys of what you thought was the most valuable piece from this presentation. Maybe an aha moment or you're like, oh, that piece of information was gold. Um, if you do have any last minute questions. But yeah, I would just love some feedback on what you thought was really like eye opening. Just so I can understand you guys a little bit more too, right? On, on more areas that I need to talk about more to help. Um, so yeah, we just love that feedback. If you can type it in the chat, that would be, that would be lovely. Yeah, definitely. What's the best way for people to get a hold of you, uh, Lindsay, to talk with you? I mean, obviously the, the links you provide as well, but what's the best way to reach out to you? Yeah. If they go to uh, smoothbusinessgrowth.com, um, there's obviously the contact page and all my social links are up there. That's probably the easiest. And then also here, I'll put this in the chat. Attendees. Um, there's also the uh, Facebook group. 
So I'll just give that link right there. Um, so that way you can ask me any questions, ask me to do a training on something, say, hey, I don't understand this tool, can you do a video? Um, you can share like, hey, I did this blog, does it look good? You can ask me to criticize, you know, I'm happy to look at your website and just say, yeah, I would do this, I would do that, you need to add this. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of, think of me as your little content coach. <laughs> Ooh, I like the hashtag content, content coach, coach. And, and, and the captain, as we like to say. Oh, yes, captain, yeah. that's right. I <laughs> <laughs> see Matrice says, totally awesome. I kind of have tunnel vision. You got me thinking outside of the box. Awesome. Good. Yeah, there's more options than you think. And sometimes you get stymied and you're so overwhelmed. And so then you end up doing nothing. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's the worst thing you can do. Just do something. And, and, and get out. You're not going to build Rome overnight, build it one brick at a time. And it's one a long-term brick. game. Exactly. And, and that's the thing too, people don't realize we're going to be in real estate and marketing and media 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Start planting those seeds now, start doing it now because you'll be a lot better in a month if you keep doing consistently and you'll be even a whole lot better in 12 months when you're down the road there. And that's the only, I mean, that's the thing I can tell you. People say, hey, Scott, you're everywhere. Well, I'm everywhere because I started practicing and doing this back in 2004 and five. Yeah. And, and learned what to do and evolved. And you can do the same thing, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. It's not as scary as you think. No, it's not. All right, Lindsay. Well, hey, I want to say thank you again for coming out to Note Camp. Spend some time with us. Really rocking it. For you. Uh, Scott is excited to be another fellow cat lover. <laughs> Uh, I see here. I got a, a question there. Uh, Shelly says, thank you, Lindsay. I have a lot to think about. Great info. Love the idea to reuse. Yeah, guys, use the link to download those, those two weeks instantly. I mean, that's two weeks right there of content. Think about that. That's yeah. a, at least another $500 to $1,000 in bonuses right there set up for you to get rocking and rolling. Uh, Eric says, lots of golden nuggets. Maria says, thank you. Great thank info. Thank you. And we love giving info, but the best thing any of you can do that will make myself excited, I know it'll make Lindsay all excited, is for you to take action and start doing that stuff. So it'll start today, start doing it now. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, guys. Appreciate. Thank you, Scott. That was awesome. Yeah, anytime. Let's see one more question here. Thank you, Timer. says thank you. Perfect. Good stuff. All right. All right. All right, guys. Um, all right. Let's see here. That is going. Uh, there we go. We're good. That is going to stop it for this session of Note Camp. We're going to take a quick four-minute break before we come on with our buddy Joel Block uh, from Bullseye Capital Partners to talk about how to raise money the Wall Street way. So stay nice. tuned. Don't go anywhere. If you do go anywhere, just go grab a cup of coffee and run to the restroom, get up, stretch, yep. and we'll see you back. <laughs> exactly. <in a> couple... <laughs> awesome. See you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Bye. All right, everybody, hang on a second. Joel's in the wrong room here. Let me get him uh, set up here. Let me just respond it back. In the wrong room.
give them a second to get logged in. So um, what happens is when you set up, sometimes they get older links or an old event. So uh, he should be jumping on here in just a second. That would be my fault, not Joel's fault. There he is. There he is, Joel. Hey, buddy, that's my fault from when I first sent the link out. It auto-populated auto a meeting versus the panelists. Like, my apology. Oh, all right. Well, you know what? I uh, Hey, you know what? Uh, here we are. And, <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm in Los Angeles, but it looks like you're somewhere better than I am. I'm in Austin, Texas with a green screen. <laughs> I know that. What do you think? We can't tell? <laughs> you, think, you think you're 